Hi everyone, today I want to show you how to knit this super snuggly and cute garter stitched log cabin blanket. It's really easy to work once you've worked this middle section and you know how to work these four panels. You just keep repeating and repeating until your blanket is the size that you want it to be. It's literally that easy. Unfortunately, I went so crazy with this blanket that I cannot fit it all in shot for you. But if you would like to see what it looks like in its entirety, then I'll pop some photos on my blog for you and I will link that down in the description. So for this project, you are going to need some circular needles. I use double knit yarn, so I'm using four millimeter needles. You will need quite long needles by the time your blanket is large. I think the largest size I used was 150 centimeters. So they're a little bit unwieldy to use when your blanket is small, but if you are only going to buy one set of needles, I would advise 150 centimeters in length. You're going to need some tapestry scissors to obviously break the yarn when you've finished working your little blocks. And you're going to need a tapestry needle to deal with those ends. So without further ado, grab some yarn, grab your needles and let's knit this blanket together. For this blanket, I am going to assume that you know how to cast on using the long tail cast on, that you know how to cast off using the basic knitted cast off and that you know how to work the knit stitch. That's all this blanket is made up from and anything else I will walk you through how we do it. So we actually only need to cast on for the first block that we do. Everything else is built up, picking up stitches and I'll walk you through how to do that. But for your first block, which is your central block, you want to cast on 20 stitches. I like this smooth side of my cast on to be the right side. So what I now will do is knit until I have 30 garter ridges on this right side. So I don't count this as a first row. And actually in this project, because it is all garter stitch, I don't even count rows. I count my garter ridges on the right side of my work. So you can now go away and you can knit until you have 30 garter ridges on that front correct side of your work. If you don't know what 30 garter ridges look like, then if you just hang far and watch a couple more seconds into this video, then I will go away and if by magic, I will come back with the 30 ridges knitted and you can see what I mean when I say you don't need to count rows, you just want to count your ridges. So I will go away and knit the rest of this first block and then show you what we do next and what it looks like. So when I talked about ridges in the beginning, I was referring to these ridges here of your garter stitch. And you want to have 30 of them for this initial first block. And then what you want to do with your right side facing you is you want to cast off knitwise until you have one stitch left on your needles. Do not cast off that last stitch keep it on your needles and join me back and that's when i will show you how we join our first block to start building our blanket so go away and cast off until you have one stitch left and then come back and i'll show you what we do next when you have one stitch left like i've got here you can break your yarn leave a 20 25 centimeter tail so that you can sew in your ends later and then you're ready to add your first block. You, what you can do is make this loop slightly bigger so that you don't lose it, but you want to keep this loop. Now, you have a couple of options when you are picking up stitches. So we want to be picking up 30 stitches because we have 30 garter ridges facing us. The neatest way to pick up those stitches so that you get the neatest possible back is to pick up these stitches here. If you struggle with that, that's the method I'm going to show you, then you can go in between these ridges, but you will get a bit more of a ridge on the back side of your blanket. So you want to get your second colour. I'm using scrap yarn for this project, but if you, you would be using um, whichever colour scheme you have planned for your blanket. Again, leave a reasonably long tail 20 centimeters minimum because you're going to need that tail to sew in your ends pop that last stitch from the first block back on your needles and you want to pop your needle into the side of one of these ridges if you struggle with this method you can go in between the ridges that's an easier way but not quite as neat so you want to pop your needle through one of those ridges 
wrap your yarn around and pull it through. And we want to do that 30 times. So again, into the next stitch, wrap your yarn around and pull it through. If you are struggling with the wrapping of the yarn and pulling it through, you can pick up your stitch, wrap your yarn around from underneath and grab your spare needle from the other end of your cables. And like when you're casting off, you can lift that blue stitch over the red stitch if you're struggling. That makes it life a little bit easier when you're picking up your stitches. So you want to work all the way along into these side bumps picking up a stitch and you should have 30 in total when you get to the end of the edge of your work. Once you've picked up your stitches your work should look a little bit like this and the rear side of your work should look a bit like this and you can see how by picking up those side ridges this pick up edge lays really really nice and flat. Then you want to turn your work and knit every single stitch all the way along until you have these two stitches left. So knit all these stitches until you just have these two left on your needles and I will show you what we do with those. Now, because we picked up 30 stitches, but we still had one left from our cast off at the beginning, we want to knit these two together. This gives a nice firm join to the color change and it also makes the edge lovely and smooth. So you just want to pop your needle into both stitches as if you're knitting them as one and knit those two together. So you go from two stitches down to one stitch. And what you can then do is first tug the blue stitch tight and that will hide it behind the pink. And when you turn your work, you won't be able to see that blue stitch at all. Then what you want to go away and do is you want to go away and knit until you have 10 of these garter ridges on the front of your work. And you should finish with the 10th ridge facing outwards with your right side of your work facing you. So when you have 10 ridges and the right side of your work is facing you, you can come back and we will show you how we build the next block. Once you have your 10 garter bumps on the front of your work and you have the right side of your work facing you, just like we did with the first block, we want to cast off every single stitch but leave the last stitch on our needles. So just a basic knitted cast off all the way along and I will meet you here and I'll show you how we add the next block on. Once you've cast off all bar that last stitch, again, you can break your yarn. Leave a nice long tail so that you've got an end to sew in once we've um, finished. And then it's time to add our next block. Now this last cast off stitch is actually really helpful to show you where you build your blocks because what you are going to do is add one here then you will turn your work again and add one here and we turn and we keep adding round and round and round and the project keeps getting bigger this block here block number two is possibly the trickiest one to add because we're working into our cast on edge and the stitches aren't quite as easy to pick up as they are on a side edge or indeed on a cast off edge so the way we build the blanket is for each of the short ends of our blocks, you need to pick up 10 stitches because we have 10 ridges. For this block in the middle, it was 20 stitches wide, so we need to pick up an additional 20. So you want to pick up 10 stitches across here using the method that I showed you for picking up these blocks. So again, leaving a nice long tail, you want to pop your needle into the first of those ridges, wrap your yarn around and pick up your stitch. And you want to do that all the way along and you should have 10 stitches from this pinky colored block that we've got here. So that's 10. And then across this edge here, we need to pick up an additional 20 stitches. And the place that you want to pick your stitches up is above these little hills, so the frowns as some people call them. So we're not going into a smile, we are going into a frown. The first one can be hidden because we picked our stitches up along the side, so it does eat a little bit of the side of this stitch up. So you can just pop your needle in roughly where you 
picked up that final purpley coloured stitch and that will be your first stitch. And we're wanting to get 20 across this row. So the next one we're going to go in here because you can see we have um, a bump that is hiding. So that's two. And then once we get past these first two, it's a little bit easier to see. So you're going above here, above here, above here, until you've got 20 or 30 in total, but 20 from this blue block. So I've got two, four, six, eight, ten from my red block, two, four, five, and I'm going to go along until I have 20 more on this blue block and 30 in total. And then this last stitch you can pop right in the corner here just so that you get a nice smooth join. And that is 30 stitches. Next we will turn our work and we're going to knit all the way along until these last two stitches here. And just like we did with the first block for these last two stitches we are going to knit the two of them together. Pull the purple stitch tight first and then just tug this yellow stitch tight but not too tight so that it looks something similar to the stitches on the other side. And then you want to go away and just like with this block here you want to knit until you have 10 of these yellow ridges and you have your right side of your work facing out of you. The process from now on is very simple, but I'm still going to talk you through the other two blocks that we have to do. And then once you've learned those two, it is really easy to carry on building those blocks. So if you want to go ahead and finish this second block, I will come back again with you and show you how we add our third and fourth blocks. So as with the first block that I did, I have knitted 10 garter ridges and I have cast off, but left this last cast off stitch on my needles I don't want to bind my ends off now we want to turn our work and we are now going to work on building a block that covers the yellow block we've just knitted and the initial blue block that we knitted to start with so you want to pick 10 stitches up from this block and 30 stitches up from this block using the same method that we used for the first block that we picked up so I'll just run through it once more. Leave a nice long tail when you join your yarn. Pop that stitch back on your needles and just pop it tight. Then we want to pick up these ridges here until we have 10. So that's the first 10 picked up. And then we're going to work along here and pick up 30. And you will notice that from this first place where we should be picking up a stitch, it's a bit hidden because obviously we picked up stitches with the yellow yarn. So what you can do is rather than trying to find the leg, if you struggle, is just pop your needle into this gap here and pick up your first stitch there. Then we want to work our way along, picking up. 29 more stitches until we have picked up a total of 30 from the blue block and when we count the two together we will have a total of 40 stitches plus this one yellow stitch here. When you pick up your last stitch of the row rather than picking it up like this you can pop your needle all the way through the gap created that just gives you a more secure join on that last end stitch. So we now have picked up a total of 40 stitches across this row and we have a total of 41 stitches on our needle because don't forget we still have this yellow stitch to deal with here. And now you want to turn your work and knit all the way along, knitting every stitch until you get to the last two stitches. And just like we did with this yellow block and this purple block, you want to knit those last two stitches together. Then you want to go ahead and knit 10 garter ridges like we did with the other two blocks because we want them all to be the same width and then you want to cast off down to that final stitch and i will meet you there that we can see how we add that last block on and then i will talk you through how you would go away and build the rest of your blanket and sort out your ends so that they're secure
So I finished this third pink block now and cast off all bar one stitch and then just like with our other blocks we want to turn our um, work 90 degrees and then we are going to work the fourth block of this round. So this actually completes our first round and the way that we pick up stitches on this block is the way that we pick up stitches on all of the subsequent blocks in our blanket because for the rest of the blanket you are no longer picking up blocks from the side of stitches on long edges. You are only going to be picking up stitches from the short edge of your block and then cast off stitches. So this is a cast off edge so you will pick up 10 stitches for each of these short side blocks and then you will pick up the appropriate number of cast off stitches in this case we are going to be picking up 10 from this block 20 from this middle block because it's the short side of our rectangle and then 10 more from here so you should end up with a total of 40 stitches picked up plus one stitch that we left on from our cast off of the pink block so just like with the other stitches you're going to pop your needle in and pick up one stitch for each of these ridges for a total of 10. Once you've picked up your 10 stitches from your side edge you want to pick up 20 stitches along this edge and you want to pick them up above the hills so not the valleys because your garter stitch looks like little hills and little valleys you want to pick them up above the hills and the first stitch is hidden because it's where we picked up a stitch so you want to pop your needle into this first gap here that is slightly hidden and pick up a stitch and then for each loop along we're going to pick up a stitch above this hill here so we're going to pop our needle back in above the hill that's two four all the way along until you have picked up 20. Stitch 20 will go here it's a little bit like the first stitch we picked up that because we've picked up stitches along the edge here it's a little bit hidden so you just want to put your needle into that final gap and pick up that. So we've now picked up 10 stitches from here 20 stitches from here and 10 now we need to go and collect 10 stitches from here. And then for the very last stitch, instead of picking up this ridge here, you can pop your needle into the hole here and pick it up. And that gives you a nice secure join. So now across this edge, we have 40 stitches. And now we can carry on and build our 10 garter ridges and cast off and carry on building our blanket like that. So if you go away and finish this fourth block, I will then talk you through how you carry on building your blanket and make it bigger and bigger and bigger. My fourth block is now finished and I wanted to just give you a couple of tips and tricks for growing your blanket because now that I've shown you this block, the process for adding new blocks is the same for every single block. So use your cast off stitch as a guide. You want your cast off stitch at the beginning when you are picking up your stitches. So every time you add a block, you will then rotate 90 degrees to the right, round and round and round and round, and your blanket will grow like that. When it comes to adding rounds on, you can do like this and use random colours, or you can sandwich each round of random colours with a round of cream, like I did in the blanket I showed you in the introduction. If you'd like to do something like that, or even to recreate the blanket that I've made, I have drawn up a chart that is on my blog for you to have a look at and you can follow it like that. When it comes to dealing with your ends, I would suggest that you take the two ends from the cast off and the picking up of stitches, tie them in a knot, a double knot, so that they're nice and secure and then sew them in in your preferred way to hide them before you cut them. You don't have to stick to 10 ridges wide. You can do whatever you like, but as long as each round is the same size, your blanket will continue to grow. The reason I picked multiples of 10 for this blanket in terms of ridges was to make it easy to count as you are growing your blanket. So when you are growing it and you are picking up stitches, you know that for every thin edge of your blocks that you have, you're picking up 10 stitches. So if I grab my bigger blanket, I will show you what I mean. It is difficult to get it all in shot, but what I mean when you are picking up stitches and your blanket is growing and you are not just picking up from this central square, if we take this 
mustard colored block for instance you can see that when i was picking up stitches i would count 10 20 30 40 50 and i know because i'm working along the short edge of my rectangle i need to pick up 20. so you would add those together and you know that that is how many stitches you need to pick up i would work it in sections so i would pick up 10 stitches then i know for the next section that takes me to the end of the block here i would pick up 10 20 30 40 50 60. so i always count my tens and then take into account my 20 or if you are on a long edge it would be 30. To finish off your blanket, you could choose to do a slimmer log cabin round in a contrasting colour. You could choose to leave it exactly how it is. Or if you wanted to, you could choose to add an I-cord edge, which is what I've done on my blanket. I've got a video that shows you how to do that and I'll link it now for you. But I really hope that you go away and you have fun creating these blankets. They're great stash busters. You can use just small scraps of yarn and add a block on as you're growing it. You can plan a nice intricate colour scheme. The opportunities really are endless. And that's how you make your very own knitted log cabin blanket. I really, really hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. And if you have, please let me know in the comments because I love to hear from you all. And I'll see you again for another tutorial soon. Bye.